this is going to be a five video series maybe six videos. I just don't know how I'm going to show you guys the last big project. Uh, but this will be a five video series on Volcano Week. So this is our last week of school for the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, and then we're going to have the entire month of July off and we'll start back up August 3rd. Uh, so this week is the big one. I planned for our last week of school to be Volcano Week. We're coming off of a four week long geography unit where we studied um, landforms and water forms. We talked about tectonic plates a little bit. Um, we talked about some early geography or geographical history a little bit. And then we also did some states and capitals, which was fun as well. And we did some mapping. So. Um, this really tied in well um, to the end of the school year because we were coming off of that unit study. Uh, a lot of the printables that you're going to see me show are either from the Sylvan Reverie or from Steph Hathaway Designs. I really like to go to them for printouts and for like worksheets and stuff because they have very specific little packets. They're reasonably priced and um, they always are just beautiful. They print out beautifully. They're just nice, simple, good stuff. And really great when you have a range of ages that you kind of have um, at your sort of homeschool table. So um, just for reference, if you're new around here or you're not sure, I have three kids that I'm homeschooling, but two that I'm really homeschooling. So my daughter is four and she turned four in March. So not that long ago. So next school year, she'll be involved a little more. Um, not a ton. I'm, I don't want to rush things with her. I feel like there's a lot of benefit to kind of waiting until they're ready when they're, you know, super young. Um, but sometimes she participates. Uh, and then I have an eight year old and 11 year old um, as well. So eight, no, eight year old and 11 year old boys. And then my younger, my younger of the three that I'm homeschooling is a girl and she's four. And then we also have a baby. So here we go. The first thing, this is day one. The first thing I had them do, they sat at the table and I pulled out these little worksheets that are, that had just a letter V on them. And I threw out some beads, some glue, some art tissue paper, which basically is just this tissue paper that when you get it wet, the, the ink or the color, the pigment, the color in the paper sort of will spread. I also put out some colored printer paper and also some construction paper, some colored pencils and some crayons. And so that's kind of just what I threw out there. And it's funny because both boys turned the letter V into a volcano, which I thought was kind of cool. So this is my eight year old. He cut out some green printer paper for the land. He used the brown art paper for part of the V. He colored this in and then this is supposed to be little bits of uh, lava. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. If you're gonna do this and you plan ahead, print this out on cardstock or watercolor paper um, because obviously I did not think ahead. And we have a little bit of tearing just from the water that he used on top of the art tissue paper. And then, oh, and then this is my other son's. He did a similar thing, but did it like an ocean um, around the lava, which I thought was kind of cute. Um, and he also drew the lava down in the inside of it, which was neat. So that was their sort of opening activity. Just to kind of like, you know, we wake up, get dressed, get going on breakfast. And that's kind of like the first thing they sat down and did. While they did that, I started reading to them out of this book um, called Earthquakes and Volcanoes. It's a, I can read about earthquakes and It's called, I Can Read About Earthquakes and Volcanoes. I picked this up at a library book sale a long time ago. Um, it is definitely like an elementary aged uh, book. And it's just the story of um, this. It starts about a farmer in Mexico, I wanna say. Yeah, and the soil under the farmer's feet get very hot and then the earth cracks and a volcano erupts. And it goes into talk about Earth's crust and magma and volcanoes and you know sort of what happens and why they happen and then there's also some information in here about um, earthquakes as well and there are names of some um, pretty um, well-known volcanoes in there so this was what I re kind of read to them as they were wrapping up their little a bit of morning artwork and then I also had 
this little guy out on the table. B is for a volcano. It seems very juvenile when you think about the fact that my oldest is 11, but these kind of things are just nice to have out. They're a good thing to kind of reinforce like the letter V, what sound it makes, also to see the word volcano. Um, I don't know, I just like to have this stuff out. And then obviously for my eight-year-old and my younger one, this is really beneficial. Um, so I had this out on the table as well. And then um, I read these volcano facts and actually I had my eight year old help me read some of them as well, which was a nice little sort of reading challenge for him because there's some pretty big words on there. Um, these are just again printables that I laminated. Then my boys um, don't have great handwriting. Well, that's not true. They have really great handwriting, but they just choose not to try sometimes. And so stuff like this, I like to include in our little unit study. So this is my 11 year old. And then this is my eight year old. You can see right about here, <laughs> we had a friend ring the doorbell and wanted to play with the kids. And so I, we told their friend that they were gonna be about 45 more minutes. And you can see that like right in here, Lincoln got a little hasty, but then he got back on track. Um, so, cause he was just excited to get outside. So we did those next for our little sort of very easy work. Um, and then I read to them out of this book, What If the Earth? I only read the pages that had to do with volcanoes, which there were only two. Um, and I actually just read this part here and then my 11 year old read out the rest. We looked at the pictures and um, decided that these kind of look like meatballs. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we did that. This particular unit or lesson sort of that I'm going through this week with them. I, I haven't really included any math yet. Um, I know that that's, I like to do that whenever I'm doing like a unit study, I like to try to involve some kind of math and language arts or math and spelling or math and vocabulary or math and handwriting into the unit that I'm doing. However, we're gonna be doing a project at the end of the week and I'm sure that a lot of math will come into play. And of course, daily math is the thing that we always do. So they're certainly getting the math in, but that was the next thing I did. Then I have this book. This is the Nature Anatomy book. Now I wanna mention this book is really great for um, just quick little concepts about geography and some landforms. There's a lot of pretty little um, pages in here, uh, but they did have this one page on volcanic mountains. And so I pull, kind of pulled this out and we looked at it a little bit. We'll probably look at it even more tomorrow because we're gonna be doing some drawings um, in our little books that I made for them for their geography unit. I left a blank page and I left the cover blank so that we could draw a volcano. And so I may pull this out and see if they want to draw a volcano in it. We'll see. Um, but again, this is the nature anatomy book. So that was that. And then we watched today this DK eyewitness uh, volcano DVD. It's all right. It's not great. It's a little dry. They sat and watched it. I just didn't think it was that great. Um, but we watched this and then we watched the um, Magic School Bus episode. It's the newer Magic School Bus on, um, it was like mountains and rocks. And we watched that. And then I also have out this, which I'm going to try and get to every day. This is the Earth Science card game from for Professor Noggins. Um, this works out really well because we're just coming off of a geography unit. So um, we're able to kind of remind ourselves or kind of like review a lot of things that we've been talking about over the last four weeks. Uh, but this is a really, I love Professor Noggins. This is a really um, good little uh, line of games. So there's that. Um, that's it for like books and worksheets and all that that we did today. The other thing though that we did is we did some prep work for, we did some prep work for our um, project at the end of the week. We're gonna be uh, constructing and um, erupting our own volcanoes. So we're actually gonna do two and we're going to do one with like your basic baking soda vinegar um, recipe of that like everybody uses for 
uh, erupting volcano. And we're gonna do one with elephant toothpaste. So to, I'm hoping that one will be a little bit of a thicker foam. We'll see how it goes. But um, I wanted to get the bases ready for the project. So this is the first one. This is gonna be my older son's primarily. I mean, we'll all work on them together, but this will be his. So we'll build the, um, built the volcano done in there. And then I did gather some materials for the project. So um, this is a little um, graduated cylinder. Uh, my brother got my oldest son a box of like all kinds of cool, really nice chemistry stuff, glass and um, this type of plastic that uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like, uh, like low reactive or something. I don't know. It's, this is like a legit science supply. Uh, so he bought them a big, big box of stuff. And this was in there. I looked it up on the home science tools website and it's not super expensive. So I figured I could use it for this project and I could buy another one if I just wanted to have one, if, if this got ruined, but I think we can use it and, um, not make it so we can't use it ever again. So I have this, and then I also have this really thick, um, I think this was a paper roll tube or like from maybe some vinyl or something that I had. Anyways, it's a pretty sturdy tube. So I pulled these two out and we'll use these for this bigger um, box for the volcano. We might even have it kind of up a little somehow when we build um, the volcano. We might have to put like something underneath it to kind of raise up the little tube. So I, 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 we spray painted that and I pulled those materials out. And then Lincoln said that he wanted his volcano to, he said he wanted it to be like an island. That's the kind of volcano he wanted to make. And he wanted it to be surrounded by water. And so I went ahead and spray painted his little box for him, blue uh, for ocean and then just a little bit of land. Oh, hold on, I have a toddler coming. They decide that they wanna do a specific type of volcano or shape of volcano um, later in the week, we'll find out. But I wanted to get those bases ready to go and I got these out and then I also, okay, so I tested um, so the baking soda, dish soap and vinegar in this bottle. And it did work. It took a little while to get up into here and then it did explode nicely out of the top. So I pulled this glass bottle and these out and we'll, we'll figure out when we build them what we're gonna use. Um, and then I wanted to check my supplies. So I have some baking soda. I do have, for I have plenty of dish soap and I have apple cider vinegar, but I tested it today and it does work. So we're good supply wise there. I also pulled these out of our little, we have like a little um, built-in in the hallway. And sometimes when we get like a certain science kit or if we've had curriculums in the past that come with little kits to do some of the experiments. And so little things like this kind of end up all over the place. And so I just kind of toss them in a drawer in that built-in. So I grabbed these out. I didn't know if like maybe putting baking soda in these or and, and using these to dump it in when we're ready for it to erupt might be a good idea or not. I don't know. I pulled them out. We'll see if we need them. I also pulled out food coloring because I wanted to check and see if I had that before I bought more and I did have plenty. I, I, I'm gonna guess yellow and red are what end up getting used. Uh, and then for the elephant toothpaste, I did have a packet of active dry yeast. I was worried because um, I have switched to a sourdough starter and so I haven't had to use yeast for anything for some time. But I did have yeast and my husband is gonna grab baking or hydrogen peroxide for me as well and so we'll be able to do the elephant okay the elephant toothpaste um for one of the volcanoes as well um okay great and then i saw this in my drawer i got this it's carbol fusion i don't know if i'm saying that right it came with like a blue one and then hydrochloric acid as well and like a, a little set that we got for um, some thing that we had to do with either preparing slides or preparing little agar plates or whatever they're called. Um, I wanted to Google this and see if I could, we could use this, um, because it is such a cool red. I don't know enough about this to, to know like what it will do. So I saw it in there and I thought, you know what, let me Google what that'll do and see if we can use that. Otherwise it's just sitting in the drawer. So that was it for our first 
uh, lesson in Volcano Week. So I will come back tomorrow and show you guys the materials that we used. And I'll try and do this every day this week. And then when we get to building and erupting all for our volcanoes, I may try and do just a dedicated video for that, like just the volcano build and eruption project. Uh, but that's it, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson one in our volcano homeschool unit, volcano week whatever you want to call it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, you guys. So I wanted to show you really quick. This is my eight-year-old volcano that he made in Minecraft. You can see my one of my other son's volcanoes in the background. He actually made a really cool one, but he was still working on it whenever I filmed this. So um, I wasn't able to show you guys that one. But um, this was just a fun way to incorporate some play and learning together. Um, I just find that if you really think about it, there's a lot of opportunities for that. So um, yes, this was Lincoln's. He, um, I just think did a really, really good job on this one. So my 11 year old says he still has two to get some more spinach to his and he said he didn't get the chance to finish it. So he'll finish his now before we get ready for bed. But I thought that was a fun way to tie in some screen time to our volcano unit. I think tomorrow I'm going to have them build a volcano out of Legos and we'll see how that goes.